so yeah, uh, my name is Joseph Weinberg. Uh, just a quick bra big breakdown of myself. Uh, I'm an early investor in Bitcoin, um, late 2010. Uh, I've been in the space since about 2012 formally. Um, I'm currently the co-founder and CEO of a company called Paycase Financial based in Canada, uh, and I'm the chairman of the company that's working on the Shift Network as a protocol infrastructure. Um, for the last uh, about two years, I've been advising central banks, world leaders, and governments, um, and in a formal capacity as the advisor to the OECD uh, in Paris as we're working on the policy and regulatory requirements to make sure that our ecosystem is still here in the next decade um, from a governance perspective. Um, so today I kind of wanted to change this up. Most people come in here and just talk about technology all day. I want to kind of educate some of the audience um, on, on some of the things that are happening, how we look at identity. I actually hate the word identity, so I'll talk about how we kind of look at this a bit differently. Um, and then into the things that are happening in the kind of more of a global regulatory space, um, as well as some announcement that we have from Shift as well. Um, so the concepts around Shift actually started about three and a half years ago. Uh, Paycase was working um, on what was called the Liquid Network with a company called Blockstream. Um, we were looking at early ways at which you would build systems that allowed cooperation and collaborat collaboration to occur on layer two and layer three scaling solutions for the Bitcoin network. Um, and around this question became a lot of other questions. How would you effectively enable competitors that had a requirement to also collaborate in environments like Bitcoin exchanges? How could you build federated systems that would allow us to do things a bit differently but still get the same results? Um, and so this, and these early kind of ideas in federated systems and federated design, we started to look at other applications and use cases beyond just scaling Bitcoin transactions. Um, and so this is kind of where the early precursors of what Shift's ideation was around, was how do you build more systems in the same kind of framework that would allow us to do different things like enable KYC or regulatory services, but doing it in a way that it was more privacy enhancing than how we do today. So there's a couple of facts here. I mean, this whole ecosystem is about sharing information. Um, and it's also all about collaboration. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do in this ecosystem is understand how we better communicate. This is what it's all about, more private ways of communicating and sharing information. Money is just a form of information. It's just data. Um, and so the question is, is, how do we build new systems that allow us to do these things um, and for the majority of people in the world that might not have access today? That's the big question. Um, so, of course, the irony in this whole data problem is that as we begin to rely more and more and more on, on, on devices and systems, we begin to trust them less. Um, and there's a couple of fundamental problems that we have today um, that I think are, you know, our ecosystem is, is ripe to make, transform, and change. Uh, of course, data is, is highly insecure. It's probably an understatement in most contexts. Um, it is not handled properly in that we basically are going through processes of replication every single time we, um, let's say, sign up for a new service, or we try to go into um, work at a, sign up for a bank, or whatever it might be. Um, and the biggest problem, too, is that data is not impartial, which means that it is actually not a reliable factor or methodology for building credibility. So there's no ability for me to say, I have certain pieces of data that I can trust more or less than others. Um, and so this is a big problem. And I'm gonna get back to now this thing of identity. I hate the word identity. If anyone is telling you they're building identity on a public network, you should run immediately, because that is probably the worst thing to do. Um, and I think that there's a big conversation here that says, why and is identity even the problem? In my opinion, it's actually not the problem. I think it's, it's a different contextual problem. Um, and at Shift, we've kind of looked at it is, is that we looked at what is really the issue? And the issue is, is actually about trust and about credibility and trustworthiness in environments. And so the questions that we've really asked was, and what we believe at Shift is that credibility should act as your collateral, not your identity information in environments that require us to come to sign up to use services every day. So can I effectively pull things like the, the, the using other systems to prove that I am who I say I am without ever having anyone know that I am my name and my passport and my birthday? And this really came from the question that we initially solved, which is, why does an ICO need my passport? That is probably the most insecure thing to give to an ICO today, but there's not really that much of a better way of doing things. Um, and so this is really what we've looked at solving. Um, so effectively, the system that we've been working on at Shift is uh, a three-party system in any type of environment. Effectively, what you have is you have a person that holds data or that owns their data. You have third-party providers in some context, whether it be a Bitcoin exchange, it could be a bank, it could be a government service, it could be a telco, uh, it could be an ICO as well, um, that effectively we you know, provide or collateralize our, our information with today. Um, and then you have a third party that is looking to effectively use that information in some capacity. So the, the, the ability at Shift is, and what the, the use case is, is that we should be able to use 
those other parties, like that Bitcoin exchange, to cross-verify that, in fact, hi, Mr. ICO that I'm coming to sign up to invest in, I can actually attest or use the proofs that you know, Bitfinex has on my identity that I've already actually validated and stored with them um, to prove, in fact, I am credible as a person and individual to do business with. Um, and this is kind of the big focus. And so what we wanted to do was to look at if you could rethink the way that identity works, um, what would you effectively do? And so the, the goal is, at the end of the day, as I said, to kind of, is to kind of build trust, worthiness, and credibility, and to not allow information on who I am to actually be blended. And so we, we looked heavily at how you look at private and public key cryptography as a way to effectively validate or verify the authenticity of users or participants in a network and basically assign just attestations or what we call proofs that in fact that information is valid and that other parties can now attest to the validity of people or different uh, institutions or scenarios as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop because this is the big question here and this is the big misconception I think in the crypto space. So the big misconception is that this is only about technology, this is only a technology problem. When it is dealing only in technology, I would agree with that. The reality is, is that these systems are working in environments that are based with humans. Um, and so I'm gonna give everyone kind of a bit of a history here for those that do and do not know. Um, the OECD was formed uh, right after the fall of uh, Western, or, uh, Nazi Germany after World War II. The intent of the OECD was actually built by the majority of Western organizations in what was called the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was the plan to rebuild Western Europe uh, after the war, and the intent of what the OECD looked to do was to work on global governance, work with the countries all around the world to ensure systems that dealt with governments, businesses, and people, and any environment within those three were to ensure that there was better policies for better lives overall. Um, and this is a really important thing. So about a year and a half ago, what we started to do and what we started to recognize even earlier than that in the crypto space was that if we were not the ones involved in that conversation, then we would effectively not be involved in the conversation that was going to regulate us either into existence to innovate or out of it. And, and this became a very glaring problem. And I commend all the early companies in our space and the exchanges that dealt with the early days of regulation because there was none and it was some of the hardest times, it still is today, in how we start to work with the traditional world. And so what we really set out to do was to make sure that we had a voice at the table on behalf of our ecosystem as we were starting to see this regulatory conversation heat up. Um, and so this is not just people behind closed doors. These are the grassroots people from this ecosystem that have been here since before crypto was cool. Um, um, and, and the early innovators in the space from Blockstream to Rootstock and so on and so forth. And we effectively have been sitting there for the last six to eight months working with uh, the G20, the Financial Stability Board, um, in order to ensure that the conversations within the G7 and G20 um, are actually um, ones that are based on education and the principles of what crypto and our ecosystem system is really about, not what you know, people just assume. Because if we go with assumptions, we won't be here, and the innovations that can be built in the space will not be able to see their true potential. And so this is really what we focused on. And yeah, we brought Doge to the table as well. Um, and so earlier this year, uh, myself and two colleagues, actually independent of Shift, uh, we wrote the first regulatory policies for the government of Bermuda. Uh, within three months, we effectively took ideations and whiteboards uh, with all of the coordination that the government of Bermuda had, and in three years passed the regulatory and legislative frameworks into law um, with the government. And very quickly, what's happened is within OECD member countries and non-member countries, that regulative or legislative framework is now being adopted in multiple countries around the world. Um, on top of that, Mauritius has basically come out as the second country um, to date that is now working on that same framework. And I'd say that by the end of next year, you'll probably have 13 to 15 countries with nearly universalizing legislation that gives clarity and comfort towards understanding how do we regulate and how do we actually work in this space and more globally as we start to integrate into the traditional world. Um, and so we've been busy at Shift as well. We've been working on Shift for about 16 months uh, in core development. Uh, we've also been actually working on use cases because what we recognize is that if you don't have use cases, then you know, then it's kind of useless. Um, and so we've worked on a bunch of projects and a bunch of different um, kind of uh, announcements across the board. One I want to highlight is with the government Bermuda themselves. Um, for the last uh, 
but eight months, we announced this earlier at Consensus this year, uh, that we were working on the identity system with uh, the government. That's been in full development since then. Um, that's in coordination with financial institutions, telecommunications providers, the central registries of the government of Bermuda, in partnership with the, uh, the Department of National Security in the country. And earlier this coming year, you'll actually see the first pilot um, deployment of that, that system um, for the whole country, and then expanding into the crypto companies that are actually coming to land in Bermuda today. Um, so that's a kind of an interesting one is a real world use case that's actually underway. Um, and so we have two more announcements today. We've been working on these pretty heavily as well. Um, so today we'd like to announce two different and new countries and uh, people within them. So we, following the creation of the Mauritian legislative framework in Mauritius, um, we're announcing today that the Financial Services Commission, which is effectively the SEC of Mauritius, will be onboarding as a trust net, net, um, anchor into the shift network and both the SEC or the FSC in the country as well as all of its partner um, um, institutions across the country will be using the network to help us better onboard and provide more privacy and data services around the companies that are coming into Mauritius. Um, and hopefully that extends into wider use cases, both in country and cross jurisdictionally for countries like Bermuda and Mauritius to all start speaking the same language um, as it pertains to our space. And last but not least, we've been working with the government of South Australia uh, for about the better half of six months and are today announcing a partnership with them and Data61. Data61 actually invented Wi-Fi. They're the research division of the Australian government and we'll be working with them to help the states in coordination of both identity and data services to happen both in their state, cross states, and then cross jurisdictionally as well. Um, so more to come. My time's almost up, but thanks everyone for coming.